This episode of Test Drive is brought to you by Elmec and their EV Duty Smart Home Charger. So this week I think I've found my favorite vehicle of the year so far. We're going to be taking a look at a 2023 Volvo XC60 Recharge. Let's get right into it. So let's take a look at some of the trim information. We have the T8 Ultimate all-wheel drive model. It gives us a 360-degree camera, heads-up display, crystal gear shifter, and then we have some add-ons as well. So the car wasn't, you know, cheap enough. You know what I mean? We had to make it even more expensive than it already was. Uh, you know, now we have the adaptive air suspension add-on and the Bowers and Wilkins sound system add-on. Both of those are like a $2,000 to $3,000 add-on just on their own. Then we also have a nice little 22 inch rims that you can configure. You don't have to get these rims, but I'm mentioning them right now because I love them. They're the biggest rims available for this trim and it looks so nice. So let's take a look under the hood of the Volvo. It's a two liter, four cylinder, and since it's a plug-in hybrid electric, we do have a little battery in there that does 18.8 kilowatt hours. It's a lithium ion that is good for 58 kilometers on a full charge, which is more than enough for what I've needed this week. But all those things combined, it does 455 horsepower, 523 pound-feet of torque. Can you believe that I just said 455 horsepower for this thing? It's insane and has no business. Zero to 60 is 4.5 seconds, and you get an all-wheel drive with an automatic transmission. So on to the front, taking a look at this really, really nice looking Volvo. The white paint looks the best. We have daytime running LEDs, that's a strip. Then you have these two headlights here. There's no fog lights on the bottom because these are basically your fog lights. They're always on all the time, no matter what. Some fake vents there, but it's fine. Then we have a big intake with the nice black. So the only thing I think is missing is maybe the black package, but with the white, the chrome here makes sense, but you can add a blacked out, which will black out all the chrome here and all the chrome all around the car, and it'll look super nice. We also have some sensors there for our 360 degree degree camera. Overall, it's just a really, really nice looking front end. I love the look of it. So taking a look at the rear of the Volvo, this week it's actually like, the car is not taller than me, so it's actually a nice change of pace here, but we have a nice little badge here that says T8 all-wheel drive, recharged, it's a bit of a mouthful. I like the nice Volvo badging here. They've really kept the rear of the Volvo, it's kind of the same with these headlights that kind of come up and wrap around the body. You got a nice little wiper here. Like I always say, I prefer that they make a little compartment, like we've seen on GM stuff, they do that. Uh, I would prefer that here. Some more sensors, I love the white, it's a metallic white can't get enough of it this is the color and probably the exact trim i'd go with if i was to get myself a volvo then we don't have any exhaust it's actually hidden by the bumper there is one there it's small it doesn't make a lot of noise this is a plug-in hybrid i don't know what you're expecting with the noise thing so it's not gonna make a lot of noise which is fine nice xc60 badging there and then of course because this is such an expensive vehicle we have an automatic opening trunk look at this at least they didn't make us pay extra for that but we kind of already are so then we hop into the trunk and this is where things maybe get a little bit interesting because I have these buttons. I don't have buttons to fold down the seats, but if you do, you'll have plenty of room and then you have that pass through. But I have this button here on the side that I can press. It makes a little noise and that's actually lowering the suspension. So if you have something heavy and you're like weighed down like this, you can just kind of lean it in. And if you, you don't care about that, well, you can raise it right back up. So I can literally raise it down like this, have a little seat in here and we're good, we got nice cargo holds here, a 12 volt charger. It's just a really, really effective trunk and I love that air suspension feature, but you are gonna pay for it, just keep that in mind. With that being said, let's move on. So side profile, you can really see the crossover SUV type hatchback situation that the Volvo has going on here. But honestly, the side profile is my favorite because you get a really good shot of those massive 22 inches like I mentioned in the beginning of the video. It's just, oh, it, it's perfection. I love the look of it, you've got four doors that will unlock on one shot. You can just place your hand in or lock if you press the little button. It's a sensor, so not sure how great that's gonna be in the winter, but for the summer, technically, it's nice weather. It works very effectively right now. Also, we have here some sensors, of course, on the mirror, but then this is where you're gonna plug in 
your charger here. It doesn't have like that fast charger flip down or anything. You literally just plug it in and there you go. But charging times have been good. I've seen, you know, anywhere between an hour to maybe two hours on a fast charger, but with the wall charger, I'm getting maybe about like five kilometers an hour, maybe a little bit less than that. It's not a fast one if you're doing it at home, but if you have one of those wall plug-in chargers, you're absolutely fine. All right, so that's been the outside. Let's hop in first to the rear and see how much room we got back here with this kind of hatchback look. The door doesn't really open that wide and, and you can kind of see on the entry there that it's, it's a very small opening, but it really doesn't affect me getting in. But I'm gonna get in behind my driver profile so you can see I'm a bit taller, so I do like to sit, sit back and low. So I'll show you exactly what this looks like when I get in behind my driver profile. So. I have enough room, way more room than I had in the Golf R. There's also a nice Bauer and Wilkins speaker right here, which I like, but I have enough room here. I could do a road trip here. I have vents right here that will get give me the air. Really nice view of that sunroof. I love that. Let me slide over here so that you can have more room. There's like this weird center stack thing. So the person in the middle, this is what you're dealing with. Like this is it. You got a cannonball the whole way and your back is doing like a 90 degree angle. So. I don't get that, that doesn't make any sense. So there is three seatbelts here, so Volvo does intend somebody to sit here. It, it's gotta be somebody of a very small stature because that doesn't make sense. Anyways, besides that, if I sit behind the passenger, I have even more room because the seat's a little bit more moved up. I'm even more comfortable here and you get a good view of that headrest where you can see it's very thin. They didn't do any crazy design. They just like, it's a headrest and that's it. And then we pull this thing down here. Nice little interesting feature. It's an armrest. Then you press this out and your cup holders pop out. It looks like it'll hold. I haven't tested it, but it, I don't know. It just looks like it will. We should be okay. No worries there. But yeah, I like that we have heated seats back here. There's no climate control per se, but you know, you have two USB chargers and you know, your, your heated seats button. There, there isn't any ventilation, but I don't care and that's fine. So overall, very, very comfortable in the rear of the Volvo XC60. Let's hop up front. So sitting inside now, Volvo XC60 recharge. It is a great place to spend time. I'm gonna talk about the comfort of the seats and the overall ride quality once we actually take it for a test drive, but let me focus on what's in the interior and what's usable. We have this nice, like I said in the beginning, that crystal gear shifter. It's made by some Sweden company that I cannot pronounce and I will not attempt because I'll butcher it. But the nice thing is, is at nighttime, this thing kind of illuminates, becomes like a crystal ball. I can see the future and you've subscribed. But continue on, we do have a nice vertical screen where we've seen that kind of like in the Mach-E and stuff like that. It's obviously on the smaller end, but it's effective for what it is. It really does blend into the whole dashboard and everything. It's got Google integrated, so you got the Play Store, you got Google Maps right inside. Like I said last time, let the software companies handle the software and the car companies handle the cars and Volvo have just understood that mission accomplished. It's great. It works well. The other thing is, is there is a lack of buttons. I really don't have, I have a volume control and then I have a skip, which I don't really know why I need that there. Cause I have it on my steering wheel, but it's there. It's you know, the, the color is nice. It looks good. It's very simplistic. You can tell that that's the design that they were going for, but I would have liked to see my HVAC controls be physical because I only have two. I have the rear defrost and the front defrost. That's it. Besides that, I have to use the infotainment screen, which is okay. Like it's not terrible. It works. It's worked every time for me. So I don't really have a big issue with that, but just something to note. If you like physical buttons, you're not getting it with the Volvo, but I don't care. Honestly, the car has been so good that I don't care about this at all. And you'll see that when we take it for a drive. We also have wired Apple CarPlay, wired Android Auto for this price. I mean, this vehicle goes for like close to 90,000 when you spec it all up and it doesn't have a wireless Apple CarPlay or anything like that. That that hurts, right? I mean, that, that hurts at that price point. You kind of expect that and it's not there. Uh, you know, it's, it's those little convenience things that it's missing but it does make up for it later on. So that's great news. It's not a storage monster either. I mean, I have a very little compartment here. Then if I remove this wood trim, I've got the standard cup holders, no wireless phone charger. Again, at this price point, we've seen it on lower price points. This one doesn't have it at all. It's, it's really, you know, if you're in the market for a car with a lot of storage up front, I mean, it's not really for that. It's not really meant for that, but there you go. Another little uh, quality of life issue is that when I want to change my drive modes and stuff like that, well, I have to go into the driving, you know, settings, then driving, it's confusing and they could have just put a drive button. I mean, there's an empty space here on my left-hand side with like, I have my trunk button and my gas popper, but don't have, there's like an empty space where you could fit a button and they didn't put a drive selector there. I don't get it, but listen, 
this is my favorite car of the year, but not every vehicle is perfect. We have our trade-offs. So let's get onto the steering wheel. I like it. it's very simple. A lot of gloss black though on the high touch point areas, but I haven't noticed it really getting dirty too much because it's small enough that it's not like it's not noticeable. But I have the things where I can change my track, adaptive cruise control, and then I have my gauge cluster screen for the driver. It's all digital. It's very nice. Tells you your battery, tells you your fuel economy, which by the way, spoiler alert, it is great. The only thing is though, is that you really can't customize what's there. You have your Google Maps navigation screen right in the center, or you have nothing. That's it. There's no themes, nothing. I'm hoping because this car can do over the air software updates. I'm hoping that Volvo will maybe take some feedback and like give us a little bit more customization for the gauge cluster because it's either a black space in the middle or Google Maps, nothing else. We also have just above the screen here, we have a really big Bauer and Walkins speaker which I love. The sound system in here is actually really good. It's near the top tier level. Again, it is an expensive add-on. You don't need it, but if you have the money for it, why not? Who cares? You know, I really like that it's exposed speakers. I like the, the wood trim. I just like sitting in here. Also, the bolstering on the seats can kind of inflate and hug you, and they are massage for both the driver and the passenger, so that is really great too. But anyways, overall, the look of the interior, I love it. The comfort is great, and we'll get right into that. So let's take it for a drive. All right, on the road now in the Volvo XC60 Recharge. And you know what? Like I said, you can nitpick all these other things inside the interior. And like there is there is little life, quality of life issues. But you get this thing on the road, and you notice just how good that add-on of the air suspension is. The adaptability is really good. The seats are really, really comfortable. I do tend to sit lower in the car and further back in this kind of car just because it's fast and like, you know, I like to have a little bit more, you know, arm length when I'm driving, but you can do that perfectly. You can adjust the bolstering because it's all air filled so I can have it like hug me more, which is what I've done here. You know, if you're a bit of a bigger person, then you could just remove that. If you're a smaller person, you could have it come more up. It's the same thing with the passenger and the passenger even has memory seats, which is like, okay, you don't usually see that. So that's great. You know, because like I said, this car is very, very expensive. That's probably the worst part about it is that, you know, with it all spec'd up, you're like touching $90,000 and you don't get any government incentives, even knowing it's a plug-in hybrid electric. And that sucks that because, you know, I don't, I haven't seen any other Volvo XC60 recharges on the road this week. I, I rarely see them and it really sucks because I really, really wish that more people could have access to a car like this because it is just so good when it comes to the driving, like the handling is there, you know, the, like just everything is really good. Like, and it drives kind of like an SUV would, but it's like, it's on another level when it, when it comes to crossovers. Cause usually crossovers can, can sometimes be bumpy, but they've done such a good job. I would maybe like to see this car without the air suspension and see how that is. I'm sure it's still really good. Like it's just my favorite car to drive, to use. And I call it my favorite car of the year so far because it's the most practical. Like the Escalade, let's face it, it's crazy. I, you know, I have right now I'm a family of two. I don't need that. So when I look at what I need and what I would use, the Volvo ticks all of those boxes, literally every one. You know, I do have the Apple CarPlay, navigation, heated seats, heated steering, ventilated seats, the rear seats are heated, and it's a plug in hybrid electric. So I'm saving money on gas. Like, let me tell you about the fuel economy in this thing. So when the battery is off, like when I go to zero and I'm only on the engine, it's about a 4.1 to 4.5, which is amazing, first of all. And then when the battery is on, I'm at a 3.1 liter per 100 kilometers. It's insane. We only had a 5.5 or like a low five with the Kia Sportage plug-in hybrid. So that means that Volvo has improved on their efficiency like crazy. So yes, you are paying a lot of money, but the efficiency is there. It's just solid. I really like as well, like the way that the steering wheel feels in my hand, it's, it's not too big, it's not too thick. It's it's like in that sweet spot, there's this whole car, I mean, you could just call it the sweet spot because it just nails every aspect of it when it comes to driving. Like it's literally your everyday driver and it's just, like I said, it's just such a shame that more people won't be able to get their hands on it because the price point is just high and, and that's it. And I think maybe the reason that the price point might be high is because vehicles of the electric quality of any type are in quite high demand, at least here in Quebec they are, so they're very hard to find. So obviously when manufacturers know about these things, the price 
naturally just goes up. One of the things I mentioned, like I said, to change the drive mode, I actually have to go into the settings, click the setting button, then go driving, and then I have a whole bunch of different drive modes. I have the hybrid, which is the one I've been in most of the time, which kind of lets the car manage the engine and the battery, you know, just does it automatically. So if I'm not pushing very hard, it'll be battery. If I'm pushing very hard, it'll be both. And then, you know, the engine might take over, you know, completely at one point. So that's great news. Uh, but also you have a pure, which is gonna allow me to do full electric driving so that it won't use the battery at all which is nice too. And then also you have your constant all-wheel drive, which is going to obviously lock you into all-wheel drive and then give you the most power you can. And I'm pretty sure once you put it into power, it will also lock you into that all-wheel drive mode. Okay, so let's do a really quick little performance test. Uh, spoiler alert, it's gonna be fast. So let's go, three, two, one, full power. That's terrifying, literally terrifying. Oh my goodness. There's nothing like 455 horsepower in like a smaller car that like, I don't know if you know, you can zoom in on my face or what, but like my eyeballs were peeled back and my head, look at this, like, oh my God, there's like no turbo lag at all because it's all battery power. And then once you get past, there's like a click point in the pedal. Once you get past that, the engine turns on and you go even faster, whoa. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. And like, it's there's a little bit of a noise too. Like it's it comes mostly from the engine, not from the exhaust, but ooh, this Volvo can fly. Oh, that's good. Ooh, yeah. Like passing slower traffic, no problem. Passing anyone, no problem. Actually this week, you know, I think I've surprised some people at stoplights. You know, I kind of just been testing the, you know, the zero to 60 kind of thing and just flooring it. And there would be cars that, you know, should, Usually beat a Volvo where you'd think they would. No, 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 not with the instant torque because the instant torque gets you off the line and by the time the engine kicks in, you've gapped them already with the, oh my goodness, it's just so nice. So that's power. I'm gonna switch back to hybrid because I do have other things to do and I want to charge my battery a little bit. Uh, but yeah, so if I let off the pedal, if I coast, uh, I can see that it is putting power back into the battery. It will come to a full stop but it's not like a hard, aggressive regenerative braking. It's a very light one. You can hardly notice it, but you can turn it off. I turned it on because I do like to see how, you know, I, I if I take my foot off the, the gas, will it slow down fully? It will, and it, usually it'll slow down fully in parking lots. And that's when like I can really one pedal drive like fully. Other than that, you do need to use your brake. And even when you do use your brake though, it is putting that small amount of power back in the battery and it's dynamically using that when you have power available so really really great system and you can unless you're ripping it like really hard like like this kind of thing you know then the engine will come on but you can't tell like sometimes I'll be at zero kilometers with the battery and I'll wonder if it's even on like if the engine is even turning itself on or am I still somehow in battery because I have like 0.5 left because I just let off for three seconds you know what I mean like it's so subtle and that's what you want from a plug-in. You don't really want to notice like, oh crap, my engine's on. Oh, there it goes, it's off. You don't notice, it turns itself on and off so silently, so perfectly that uh, yeah, you really, really can't tell. Also in my drive mode settings, I have something called the battery usage, which means I can turn it to auto. I can tell it to hold, which means to not use the battery at all and only go on, you know, the, the turn the engine on. And then I can tell it to charge, which I think will use the engine to actually charge the battery or just prioritize charging by regenerative braking. So it's nice that you have those things. I also have a, a funny little toggle that says always start drive mode in pure. Um, I haven't turned it on because I do like to drive these cars as efficiently as I can. So it hasn't been on, but you can do that if you just, you know, you don't care about fuel economy or anything like that and you just wanna absolutely rip this car to your heart's content, you can absolutely do that and it will always be in the pure drive mode, all wheel drive, everything, so that's great. I also think that this car would be excellent, excellent, excellent in the winter, which is good because of the all wheel drive, because it's heavy, it's got the battery, you know, so I think it would be make an excellent winter car and that is all the reasons why it's my favorite car of the year. But let's do final thoughts on the Volvo XC60. So like I said, there is little quality of life things. There's no drive mode selector. There's no wireless CarPlay. It's not a huge storage monster. 
although you know it maybe it kind of looks like it from the outside but the trunk is fine you got enough space there and the rear is okay too it's just that middle seat you're sitting at that 90 degree angle like i said and you know it's just little stuff like that where it's like meh you know but then you get in you drive it you use it every day and it quickly makes sense it quickly makes sense why you know more people should have access to a car like this and I really wish that Volvo made maybe like a more affordable one because I think at every trim level this car is just not attainable for maybe a lot of people that you know and, and I, I mean that's good that's why we have guys like Kia Hyundai who offer the same kind of stuff at a lower price point but I don't know Volvo in my opinion is better than them in almost everywhere besides the feature area Volvo beats their competition it set the bar so high now for plug-in hybrid electrics I will be spoiled forever uh, you know until I get another one that beats it but so far this is the car of the year it drives so well it's comfortable I love the seats I love you know it just makes sense it's a vehicle it just makes absolute sense for my needs and I think a lot of other people's needs too so my recommendation is to go and test drive it you'll see exactly what I'm talking about just go to the Volvo Volvo dealership if you're in the market for a plug-in I don't know maybe you can work something out with the price I don't know but if you are in the market and you can't afford it money's not an option I can give my full recommendation on this because it is just such a great job such a great car and I think more people should experience it you deserve to experience it so take it for a test drive push the pedal all the way past that click point make sure you do that because then you're going to unlock the full power of the car and with that being said i'm going to go ahead and get out of here because i could literally talk about this car all day but nobody wants to listen to that and i don't think anybody has time for that so i'm going to go ahead and get out of here thank you so much for watching if you made it this far you have to subscribe you have to like let me know if you're in the market leave a comment and let me know what you think of the volvo xc60 recharge do you think it's useless do you think it merits my favorite car of the year after everything i've said but anyways i'm gonna go ahead and get out of here like i said you guys have a good one and take care we'll see you next time bye